Catastrophic. That is the only word that describes the effect coronavirus has had on the entertainment industry over just the past three days. What we are witnessing is the single biggest crisis this industry has ever faced, not an exaggeration. There is no comparing the size, influence, and finances of film and television today compared to prior hiccups, and unfortunately, this is just the beginning. Films are being delayed all over the place. Movies and television shows have had their productions shut down, and live sports are off the air. As a whole, the entertainment industry is going to be unrecognizable on the other end of this. Right now, I just want to organize all of the news from the last week and make it a bit easier to digest. And to do that, I will be breaking up this news into four categories. Film distribution, film production, television production, and televised sports. And really, we're only going to be scratching the surface here. So let's start with film distribution. The first film to suffer was No Time to Die, which was pushed from the end of March, early April, all the way to November, and from there, the dams broke open. F9 The Fast Saga moves from May 22nd all the way to next April, and maybe they can use that time to find a better name for the film. A Quiet Place 2, which was set to release on March 20th, which is a week from the day I'm recording this, has been pushed off the schedule, doesn't have a release date right now. Peter Rabbit 2 was pushed from Easter all the way to August, so Christmas in July now gets followed by Easter in August. And then a couple Disney films. New Mutants, which has already been delayed for about two years now, I believe, has been pushed from April 3rd to who knows. At this point, come on, just release it on Hulu, Disney. Just release New Mutants on Hulu. And then, of course, Disney delayed Mulan, which was set to release on March 27th. Now, about three weeks ago, when coronavirus was only really beginning to pop up throughout Europe, and not really on America's radar, the consensus in the industry, or at least the industry media, was that movie studios would wait to see how Mulan performed at the end of March before deciding whether to delay films or not. I never thought that Mulan was going to make it to release. I believed this was inevitable, it was only a matter of time, and here we are, Mulan, the film that many so-called industry experts thought was going to be the test balloon is itself a casualty of coronavirus. So that's it. Those are the delays so far, the big ones. There are a couple films, interestingly, that have not yet been delayed. Trolls World Tour, currently scheduled for release on April 10th. That's not staying there. That's going to move probably into the fall. And Black Widow. Disney is currently keeping Black Widow on May 1st, but I do not believe it will release there. I believe Black Widow will shift to the fall and that the fall marvel film the eternals will shift to the spring which is currently home to shang chi and doctor strange 2 and as i will talk about later those films are not quite filming at the moment so films are being delayed and amc and regal at the moment are reducing their theater capacity by half this is for several reasons they don't want to close, they're going to try not to close, they're, end up, they're going to have to, of course, end up closing. Maybe not because they are forced to, but because no one is going to go to the movies. Not just because they don't want to get sick, but because now there is nothing releasing. No one wants to go to a movie theater. Audience habits will change as people get more used to streaming at home instead of going to the theaters. This is a trend we've been seeing for a while. Let's be honest, the Marvel Cinematic Universe has been propping up the cinema industry for years now. If you take out just Avengers Endgame from last year's worldwide box office totals, the industry is doing just about the same as it was over a decade ago. That's not good. Audiences are trending away from the cinemas and Unfortunately, coronavirus is only going to greatly accelerate that process as, as I said, people get more used to watching on streaming and not going to the cinemas. So those are the big notes in regards to film distribution. So now let's get into film production, which, as I've said before, a global pandemic is not really the time you want to be investing hundreds of millions of dollars into expensive equipment, talent, a large crew that travels the world, it's just not a good time to film movies. And as this past week progressed, 
almost every notable film shoot you could think of has gone on pause. And because almost all of them have gone on pause, I want to start by talking about the several films that strangely have not gone on hold yet. And they almost all belong to Warner Brothers. As I sit here recording this on the evening of Friday, March the 13th, 2020, hindsight is a wonderful thing. Warner Brother Films, The Matrix 4, and The Batman are continuing their shoots. They have been in production for several months now. The Batman is being filmed in London, and I believe that Matrix 4 is being filmed in Los Angeles, and those shoots are continuing. And not only that, Warner Brothers' Fantastic Beasts 3, from what I understand, is scheduled to begin filming on Monday of this upcoming week. So Warner Brothers is plugging ahead for the foreseeable future, which I don't think will be very long. Otherwise, pretty much every film you can imagine has put production on pause. Uh, most notably, of course, since they are propping up cinema right now, are the Disney films. Every live action film Disney currently had in production is no longer in production. That includes The Little Mermaid, which is for theaters, a Home Alone remake, which I believe is for Disney+, Plus, a Ridley Scott film for what is left of Fox, and of course the Marvel films, which are now on a production pause for the foreseeable future. In fact, Shang-Chi director Destin Daniel Cretton is currently isolating on the films set in Australia. So what's going to happen as a result of these films not being able to film on their desired schedule? Well, they are going to be delayed, just like films that are supposed to be released in the coming weeks and months are being and will be delayed. Let me go back to the example earlier I was using of the MCU films. Black Widow moves to the fall, The Eternals moves to the spring, Shang-Chi now with suspended production, Doctor Strange 2, which not only will have this struggle, but of course is still trying to find a new director. Sam Raimi is uh, supposedly attached. I hear that he's working on it, but he has not been officially announced yet as director. Doctor Strange 2 will be moving back. So every film distributor's global release schedule is going to be rejiggered in a way where the delays kind of balance each other out. And that's about it right now for film production. Now let's move on to television production because this is the part of the video about seven and a half minutes in where I have some bad news for you. If you are planning on quarantining yourself and passing the time with television, I don't know, sports, game shows, daytime talk shows, late night talk shows, whatever your interest, you're going to be in for a bad time because almost every television production you can imagine, like film, in the past couple days has shut down in the blink of an eye. Let me get the network television shows out of the way first. Flash, Grey's Anatomy, those are the big names, but it's everyone, everyone shutting down production. Here's why it doesn't matter so much for broadcast television. We are in the middle of March. At this point, these fall to spring shows are in the middle of production on either their second to last episode or their season finale. So it's not like they're dropping it dead in the middle of the run. They are very close to the natural conclusion of this season anyways. They may just be an episode or two shy. The first shows to really be affected were the daytime and late night talk shows, programs with live audiences. At first, early in the week, all of these programs announced they would begin airing without live audiences. Some of the talk shows wanted to wait a week before implementing the policy. Others did it immediately. I think the first to kick out the audience was Samantha B. And Jimmy Kimmel Live not only kicked out the audience, they also kicked out the host and brought in Pete Buttigieg as a guest host one night. That was fun. But just a couple days later, the ripcord was pulled and essentially every possible program that has a live audience has either kicked the audience out or shut down entirely and the ones that haven't shut down yet I believe will do so within the week because that's just the way the dominoes are falling. Coronavirus is also wrecking havoc on pilot season. If you don't know what pilot season is, it's the time of year, less important now than about a decade and two decades and three decades ago, but pilot season is when the broadcast networks develop 
prospective new shows to air in the upcoming fall to spring television season. March, around this time, pilots are in production. There are dozens and dozens of hopeful shows that are filming one episode, their first episode right now, and they want to make the best episode possible and then present it to the networks and producers and try to get picked up for 13 episodes, at least. And coronavirus is throwing a massive freaking wrench into pilot season. So for the broadcast networks, just going back to them for a moment, while they will not be suffering much now because their standard television season is wrapping up almost close to naturally from a production standpoint, the fact that the pilot season will be disrupted means that the broadcast networks and a couple cable channels who still use the pilot process are going to end up scrambling to cobble together a fall lineup. This affects the streaming services, but to a lesser degree, since they are not beholden to the traditional broadcast model. That said, the streaming services and premium networks such as HBO and, you know, the like, will and have already started, of course, shutting down their productions too. N Netflix, most notably, I would say is Stranger Things season four. They already released a teaser. Uh, I had a personal belief that they were setting this up for a Christmas or holiday release, but I can say now that if production is delayed for weeks on end, a month and more, which I, I really do think is what we're looking at, no, Stranger Things 4 is not coming out this year. It's pointless to just list off all the shows that are going on pause because it's all of them. And if it's not all of them yet, it's all of them by a week from now at the pace that things are moving, maybe even a couple days from now. So let's move on to our fourth and final area this evening or, or morning or I don't know what time of day you're watching this. And that is televised sports. And to talk about televised sports, we must go to the beginning of where this week really, really kicked into high gear. At around 9 p.m. on the evening of Wednesday, March 11th, NBA player Rudy Gobert was diagnosed with coronavirus, and just several minutes later, the NBA suspended the rest of the season. Happening at the same exact time was a presidential address about the pandemic, and minutes after this, Tom Hanks announced that he and Rita Wilson had COVID-19 coronavirus. That half hour radically changed the entire conversation around coronavirus. I thought that tone would have changed early in the week when South by Southwest was canceled, but that didn't really register, I think, the way it should have. The next morning and into the early afternoon, every sports league you could imagine in the United States had been shut down. And without live sports, there is no live sports television. Now, I've spoken before about how live sports has, much like the Marvel Cinematic Universe is propping up the cinema industry, live sports has been a crutch for the broadcast networks for a long time now as cable and premium cable and now streaming has eaten into their business. That's why all the networks and even cable channels get into high bidding wards, handing out billion and billion dollar contracts for live sports, because it is the only thing that can still consistently, you know, is going to bring in an audience. For example, the annual NCAA basketball tournament is a top priority for CBS and Turner Broadcasting Networks, who recently, a couple years ago, signed an eight-year extension for the tournament for $8.8 .8 billion. The NCAA tournament is worth over a billion dollars a year for CBS and Turner Networks, and this year it's just not happening. They do not get the ad revenue now. It will hurt their bottom line drastically. Same for hockey, same for baseball, same for racing, I guess, same for the tennis tournaments, same for the Masters, soccer from all over the world, and of course, the NBA. It's all, for the moment, simply gone, and there is nothing to replace it. Because if you think that ESPN and all of the sport networks out there can simply replace live sports with live sports talk, well, that talk is also going away. Earlier today, which if you need a reminder, is Friday the 13th, 
Oh, Jesus Christ. Fox Sports 1 announced that next week they will be suspending production on all of their top live programming. They say this is for a week and then they will reevaluate. I think this will be a lot longer than a week. And I think eventually ESPN will have to do the same. Regional sports networks will have to do the same for the same reason film productions are getting shut down. Because if one person becomes infected in the crew that interacts with a lot of people, then that's it. Everyone has to self-isolate after that. And from there, you, you don't have any production. So this is inevitable via sickness or via preparing and making sure no one gets sickness. I much prefer that we have no live television because we are all trying to stay safe and healthy. And that is what we will be seeing. As I said at the start, this is only scratching the surface. What lies underneath the surface is, you know, I, I can't put it any other way, but economic hardships that are going to wreck even more havoc on the industry, on smaller studios, smaller distributors, jobs will be lost, and there is going to be some pain ahead. There's no putting a bright face on it. I'm just trying to keep it real. That's what I have today. Please subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I, I've done a couple coronavirus related videos lately, but I think I've gotten it out of my system now, no pun intended, and I want to get back to the brighter content that I enjoy making and I think will provide a nice distraction to a world that's kind of starting to spiral a little bit. So please subscribe, comment below, whatever have you, and stay tuned for more right here.